morning. It's Wednesday. You know what that means. Time for the Southern California Writers Association on Paper. I'm your host, Maddie Margarita, here with Diana Pardee on tech. Every Wednesday morning, the Southern California Writers Association turns our Facebook page over to a new author, or in this case, a returning author, to talk about their books and their work. This morning, we are pleased to welcome back Greta Boris. Uh, Greta is the USA Today bestselling author of The Seven Deadly Sins Murders, a psychological suspense series, and her new series, The Mortician Murders, a cozy paranormal series. She hails from sunny SoCal, where based on her books, I'm sorry, where, based on her books, which are all set there, things are darker than you'd expect. I heard somewhere that, um, you know, we were talking about LA as a setting, and they were like, even in sunshine, we have shadows. Oh, absolutely. Don't that's you love a, that? That's uh, her stories have been called atmospheric and unputdownable. To learn more, visit her at gretaboris.com and grab a free novella while you're there. She's also co-founder of Author Wheel, a company that creates book courses and a podcast to help writers keep their stories rolling, which we always need. So welcome back, Greta. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is so fun. So you are one busy person. Yeah. <laughs> Not overly these days. I'm like, yeah. Aside, aside from your new familial extension. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, here's my mug. It says, my favorite people call me Nana. Aww. No, oh. I have an adorable grandson who's just so cute. It's ridiculous. So uh, so you have to try and pull yourself away from him to um, complete all the responsibilities and goals that you have, uh, which takes a tremendous amount of discipline. So that's my first question. So um, how are you dividing your time these days? Well, if, if I knew that, no. <laughs> or is it day by day or hour by yeah. hour? Well, I, I, you know, this is silly, but I started, and it's so obvious, but I started going to bed earlier and getting up earlier so that I have a little bit of time uh, in the morning before the phone starts okay. ringing and all the things start happening. And so I've been trying to get my writing in early um and then uh, and then it's marching on different days to different things I try to make sure I get some exercise every single day because I think if you don't take care of your your bod while you're doing all this stuff you know you're just going to break down um but it's all fun and exciting and so that makes it so much easier too right that you want you want to do it so. Well, not, not only that, what you write is so fun. It has to be fun writing it. Um, yeah. So you have kind of transitioned from the Seven Deadly Sins, for, uh, which were a little darker, the series. How many, with, with, don't test me, Seven Deadly Sins? Yeah. Are there, there are novels in the series? There, you are brilliant. Now. I am I on it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> how many cups of coffee did it take to come up with that now? You know, I... <laughs> I just heard a quote. It said, five out of four authors are terrible at math. And if you get that. <laughs> well, you know, I, I did yeah. the calculation beforehand. So I, you know. I, I saw the wheels turning. Right. So, so you've done that and then um, finished that series, which is doing great and is available, currently available on um, Amazon, right? Everywhere. It's wide. Everywhere. Oh. That series is wide. And um, actually, the very first book in the series uh, which was titled A Margin of Lust. Um, I rewrote it last year at my publisher's request. We're relaunching it as um, a margin, or no, it's going to, the new title is The Liability of Lust. And she's going to be kind of relaunching the series with new covers and um, kind of a new vibe. And i um, excited about that because the first book, you know, is my first book. And um, she suggested that we kind of update it a little bit. And when I looked through it, I was like, how did this ever get published? It was terrible. I thought it was terrible. So how much you change in when you write a bunch of books. So I'm um, excited that series is relaunching and that series is wide. It's Barnes and Noble, it's everywhere. Um, all the books are still available except for the book one, which is um, going to be republished in May. That's under construction, so, right? Under construction. Yeah, but the other books are still available in the series. Okay. And, okay. and if you want the old covers instead of the new covers, you can check them out. All right, so you, you are um, moving on. You have moved on to your next series. Yes. Um, 
Yes, you've gone to ground, as they say, uh, oh. with the Mortician series. Yes. So, which is a great, I love the premise, um, love the character. So you've gone from writing a series to a series character, right? Yes. So that's an interesting transition. But let's talk about the books and then maybe we'll talk about that. Okay, so here is book one. It's probably backwards, right, on the camera? No, no, and we can see it's perfect. Okay, good. So the title is To Die For, and you can just tell by my, I have the most wonderful um, cover designer. Her name is Mariah Sinclair, and she is known as the queen of cozy covers. So she's amazing. She really uh, did all my covers. And so it's, you can tell it's a lot more humorous. I think during COVID, I was just like, oh, I need something funnier. And I'm not going to not have dead bodies in my books. That's just silly, you know. You just got to have a dead body or two. So making dead bodies fun was a, a goal. And um, so I got this idea for a main character who is a um, hairstylist. She's kind of rockabilly and she works in a hair salon that caters to what is the leisure world crowd, only I don't call it leisure world. And in the very first chapter of the very first book, she gets the request to do the hair and makeup for one of her favorite clients the only hitch is the client is dead and so she's doing the hair and makeup for her funeral and so when she goes to the mortuary and she touches the hair of this dead woman she gets this shock and it takes her the course of the book to figure out that when she touches a dead person's hair she gets their final sensations in life and if they were murdered that person will that spirit will follow her around until until they out the murderer and bring justice so wow so you have a justice seeking ex beautician turned mortician yes by the end of the first book she decides to go to mortuary school and so i do have the novella that's available for free on my website is called mortuary school and it's um, her adventure because of course she has to have one when she goes to mortuary school. So, Wait. and there is a, a love interest. It's not a romance, but there's a love interest who shows up in the first book. He's the night watchman for the mor mortuary and he's in online school to become, he wants to get into the police academy and become a cop and eventually a detective is his big goal. So he's really, they kind of partner up. When they discover that her clients death which just like her hair color was not as natural as everyone thought <laughs> so, yeah all right i'm in yeah. i'm in yeah. 100 um, so we you know it's interesting because i found out a lot of um forensic investigators go to mortuary school first i didn't know that yeah it makes them moves them up in the uh consideration for forensic investigators if you yeah. had mortuary um, school, if you've gone to or studied mortuary science. Um, so there you go. Um, there's yeah. so many things. There's so many things to, yeah. to learn. Uh, yeah. It's fun. I, I'm uh, actually, I have one reader and I don't remember which book it was in because I'm actually releasing book four next week. So I've been plowing along here. Um, I had one reader say she, uh, she never thought she would like a book series that was primarily set in a mortuary, um, but she loved it. And she said, believe it or not, I know it's silly, but it's making me feel less afraid of ending up in a mortuary one day. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cool. You know? You're doing a public service, Greta. Exactly. You know, and hopefully uh, we don't all end up with an upsweep, you know, in the, in, the, in our final resting yeah. Um, pose. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, that scares me. But uh, okay. So yeah, you've got um, the two series and you have a podcast and the podcast is uh, related to Author Wheel. Do you, do you want to talk a little bit about Author Wheel? Sure. So the Author Wheel is uh, my side hustle business that I do with Megan Haskell, who is an award winning fantasy author. Um, and so we have. Uh, it started as kind of a blog and we were teaching courses live in, and then COVID happened. So we moved our courses online. Um, our first book, 
I have right here is publish, take charge of your other career. And since she was always independently published and that was always her goal, and I was traditionally published and that was always my goal, we kind of like talk about the pros and cons of both and the process of both because it's two different paths and two different tactics for most of it. Um, and then we moved on from there. Uh, we wrote three uh, short guides for authors, one on um, managing your time and getting more words on the page, one on genre, understanding what genre is and, and genre expectations, and then one on how to, planning a novel, but this is not plotting. It's before you get into the nitty gritty of the story, but setting up your world, setting up your um, series Bibles. Is it a series book or just a single book? So we have um, those books and we have some more courses now online. And then we started the podcast, which has been a huge blessing and so much fun. We're in our second, we're wrapping up our second se season. We do a lot of interviews with people who have products and services um, for writers. So, you know, there's so many scammers out there these days willing to take advantage of, of writers that we try to find people that we trust um, and interview them. So we've had editors and cover designer and a book narrator, and then people with some marketing programs that, we just interviewed Claire Taylor. That episode's not live yet. In her book, Reclaim Your Author Career, where she goes into the Enneagram and how important yeah. it is to align yeah. author personality with what your, your series choices and your marketing choices and everything. So it's, uh, we are learning a ton. It's just been a lot of fun. Well, and not only that, you, you recently started or are getting ready to launch your Kickstarter, right? Your Kickstarter? <laughs> Yes, we are. And that it came about too, because we interviewed Russell Nolte, who's like the king of Kickstarter um, in our first season. And he has a Kickstarter accelerator program. And we, after we interviewed him and shut off the recording, we were both like, okay, where do we sign up? Um, so we're doing that. And um, the page, the Kickstarter page is not live yet, but it, the, it can be followed. But instead of, um, kind of drawing people into that because they know there's a lot of people who don't even know what Kickstarter is, which is hard to imagine after Brandon Sanderson's big coup oh. on Kickstarter. Was it like 36 million? We're not aiming that high, but yeah. yeah aim that high, fall a little short, that's okay. Yeah, so, um, but we are having, we, we are launching a little celebratory free mini course. Um, that kind of feeds into all the things we're doing with the Kickstarter project. And it's uh, seven days to your author brand. And if I had done this work, this little mini course um, a long time ago, I think I would have been more clear um, about starting a new series, what kind of series to start. It's, it's very much like understanding who you are as a writer and an author um, so that you know which direction to go. Like, cause we all get so many ideas. So should I write a book A or book B? Cause I have a book that I wrote, co-wrote with somebody that has never been published and it's a good book, but it is not in my brand. So I don't know what the heck to do with the thing. So if it would have saved me a lot of time if I had gone through this little mini course. Um, to understand and that, and that helps you distill a tagline for yourself too that's great that's really helpful and um it's free so yes right? totally free. yeah right? nobody can argue it's free so believe it or not we are running out of time is it, wow. I told you this would go past uh yes. and but um we're gonna go over a little bit because now um we were talking a little bit beforehand about your charlene harris story um oh yes I still, I still want to hear your Charlene Harris story. So maybe we can finish up with that. Okay, I'll tell it super fast. Um, so this was when I was actually pitching The Seven Deadly Sins, the first book in The Seven Deadly Sins. And I went to Left Coast Crime and Charlene Harris was a keynote speaker. So I'm and gonna jump in a minute. Uh, for those of you, we should have uh, prefaced it. Uh, Charlene Harris writes um, True Blood and yeah. um, the... Sookie Stackhouse series. Sookie Stack Stackhouse and the Tea Garden. What um, yeah. stories? Aurora Tea Garden. Right, Aurora yeah. Tea Garden. So go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
she's huge she's big huge. huge huge like one of her series got turned into a tv series like she's so worth a million dollars huge but go ahead yeah so she was the keynote speaker uh, and she was wonderful and um they have this thing called an author idol contest where you would put your first you put a a, a group of pages into a, a bucket and then um, you didn't even have to put your name on it. And then they had a panel of agents and editors up front. And then they would draw, the narrator would draw out the bucket, read it out loud, and the agents and the editors would raise their hand when they would have stopped reading. And um, so I put some pages in the bucket and I was a nervous wreck. Even though my name wasn't on it, nervous wreck. So we were like 20 deep in so far in this, process and so far nobody's pages got read all the way through everybody's got their hands raised you know and stopped a couple of people walked out crying it was just terrible <laughs> and I was like why did I do this and then in the middle of the whole thing Charlene Harris walks in and she sits down right in front of me with a friend of hers and I'm like oh no she's gonna hear my pages absorbing so anyway sure enough a few more times later they pick up my and they start reading and I'm like sweating blood. And um, you could have heard a pin drop. Nobody said anything. They read it. It was the, all the way through. The agents and editors never said they would stop reading. And when they were done, um, the woman who was with Charlene Harris looked at her and she goes, that was good. They have Southern accents. And Charlene Harris goes, that was good. Anyway. That was on my wall. That was on my screensaver. That was everywhere. When Charlie, when I was pitching and I was getting all those no's and I was feeling like so discouraged, I just had everywhere. Charlene Harris said it was good. So that was my Charlene Harris story. And now I'm writing uh, some stories sort of in the vein of Char some of Charlene Harris's work. So Which she's is, an inspiration. I see what you did there in the vein. Charlotte, yeah, oh, I didn't even do that on purpose. You know, that's how you know what a great writer you are. You're, uh, you don't even think about it. You're funny and entertaining. So I think that's what people will find in your books. Um, thank you for being here. Best of luck on the series. Best of luck on the podcast. Best of luck on Kickstarter and Author Wheel. Um, and we hope that we'll see you again soon. And yes. yeah, so um, until next time, uh, we will see everybody uh, hopefully next week. Wednesday, 10 a.m., right here on Facebook Live, the Southern California Writers Association Hope Day Book Tour. I'm your host, Maddie Margarita, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.